So in the book, The Global Achievement Gap, uh, Tony Wagner, who is the uh, book's author, uh, lists seven survival skills for the 21st century, for the, the knowledge economy or the, uh, the kind of more global economy we're going to be part of. Uh, and, and I think to be clear, these seven survival skills are really, uh, for the most part, all around kind of job, getting a job and keeping a job and maybe being successful in a career capacity. So what are these seven critical skills? And I started writing them out here. Uh, the first critical skill is critical thinking or, or also um, problem solving. And that's obviously going to become more and more important uh, as we uh, move forward. And really, this is often about uh, asking the right question. So I think this is a big, a big thing that comes up over and over in the book is basically asking the right kinds of questions, trying to get to the root cause of a particular issue, and then uh, being able to resolve that issue by identifying the root cause. Uh, and then the, the next big critical skill to have for the 21st century is collaboration. And this really means collaboration across networks. And, and that just means uh, networks of people that you know and maybe teams of people that you've got to work with. Uh, and, and in general, this is just also, um, in addition to just being able to collaborate, the, the other aspect of the skill is being able to lead by influence, to be able to lead by influence. Okay? And in this particular capacity, this kind of comes up in the context of when you're working on or working with virtual teams, maybe you're working over the internet, you may have colleagues in different parts of the world. Uh, in those cases, being able to collaborate effectively across uh, different networks or across different uh, domains becomes critical. And, and moreover, I think uh, as we move into a world where uh, knowledge is more and more distributed, you may have to work with different people to get access to different pieces of knowledge that you need to carry out your job. The third big skill is agility, and you can also think of this as adaptability. So adaptability. Okay, and agility and adaptability are important because our roles, our jobs are constantly changing. Uh, the skills that we need to know for our jobs are changing. Uh, the technology that we might use to carry out our jobs might be changing, and obviously technology is just changing in general, and that's causing all sorts of ripple effects. Okay, and, and, and those are reasons why you have to be very agile and very adaptive. Uh, the fourth critical skill is initiative, and uh, this is also listed as entrepreneurialism. 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 Okay, and entrepreneurialism is actually uh, much more about being self-directed, about being maybe more proactive about the things you do, rather than kind of being told always what to do and kind of being an assembly line worker. With entrepreneurialism, the idea is that you you will kind of take the bulls by the horns, so to speak, grab the bull by the horns. Uh, the fourth critical skill is effective communication, and that includes both oral communication and written communication. Okay, and obviously in a world where we are collaborating more over email, over uh, conference calls, and, and perhaps calls with people in, in different time zones or different parts of the world, uh, where we maybe are giving webinars to people who may not be able to see us as we present, uh, for all these reasons, being able to present effectively, being able to communicate effectively uh, and concisely and clearly becomes all the more critical. The sixth skill is being able to access and analyze information. And, and this is really about, and this is really kind of goes to the notion that we are in a world where we are being overloaded with information and, and that information is rapidly changing. Uh, so for example, they cite the example of, of the periodic table of elements, which has more elements in it today that they've discovered uh, than it had when probably most of us were learning chemistry. Another example is astronomy, where the number of planets is always changing. I mean, when I was growing up, Pluto was considered a planet. Uh, a few years back, they reclassified it to a dwarf planet, and they've discovered other dwarf planets since then. And so the idea is that information is, is, uh, is, is changing. It's coming to us at a, a very rapid pace. Uh, and also, I think a big part of... of being able to access and analyze information. It's not just about being able to find that information, but about being able to maintain or determine the integrity of that information. And the example that they give in the book is a situation in which a number of students were asked to do a report about Martin Luther King Jr. And they looked online at various sources and they actually came across a source that was written by a white supremacist group. And as a result, uh, that group had a certain uh, disposition in their in their depiction of the events that, that may or may not have, have been that accurate, but, but they certainly had a certain slant in how they depicted Martin Luther King's life. And so if you only looked at that one source, you might not get the complete picture about Martin Luther King. 
okay? Uh, and then obviously accessing information is, is also about, and, and is, is also kind of part and parcel with, with the notion that we are uh, no longer in a world we need to know everything. Uh, we can know a subset of things, but access the additional information that we need uh, from various sources, and, and then we have to have the ability to analyze that information and do something very useful with it. And then finally, curiosity and imagination. And, and really, this is about um, what they term as inquisitiveness. So inquisitiveness. And I think this goes hand in hand with uh, being able to ask effective questions, and I think it's obviously a very related notion. Uh, but this curiosity and imagination, this is what really leads to innovation ultimately. So the other thing that they mention in the book is, is you know, what can we do or, or what's happened in terms of, of what's caused innovation maybe to, to become stifled? You know, what can we, what do we need to consider to help promote innovative environments? And so I think that the first big thing that they mentioned in the book is that we nowadays tend to celebrate individual achievements. We celebrate individual achievement. And the reality is that we, we live in a world where, in fact, we need to be more interdisciplinary. We can't just rely on, or I mean, actually, maybe not inter myth a bad word for it. I think we, we, today we, we, we live in a, in a world where teamwork is much more important. I mean, obviously, a lot of problems are solved uh, by team. Uh, corporations will, will you, you, you really will work kind of completely by yourself. You'll often be working in collaboration with others. And so... Uh, celebrating individual achievements is kind of the antithesis. That's what we do today. But we need to move more towards a model where maybe we celebrate teamwork better. Okay. The next big uh, thing that, that's mentioned is, is specialization. And so the reality is many of us are specialized in, in a particular set of skills. Specialization. Uh, and, and in practice, in the long run, in, in 21st century, we're going to be in a world which is much more interdisciplinary. Inter disciplinary and as such we have to to modify how we do things and what we learn uh, the third thing is that we live in a world that is uh, averse maybe to making mistakes it's maybe mistake averse and, and we are kind of very driven especially in school to always find the right answer the, the correct answer on a test and, and, and so on and so forth uh, but in real life I mean uh, great things are accomplished when you take risks. So, uh, you know, it's very important to be able to take certain risks in order to be able to achieve more. And, and I think that there's an important point, which is that being able to take risks, this is really how you learn. If, if you never made mistakes, then you wouldn't be learning as effectively. In fact, when I think back in my own life, often the, the things that I learned best were things that I, I might not have known how to do at one point. I made a mistake and then I learned from that mistake. Uh, and then try to avoid making that mistake ever again. Uh, the fourth notion is that we are uh, have sort of been driven into what's called a, a very consumer-oriented world, and, and by, cons by consumer I mean not just that we we buy things, but we we also tend to consume a lot of information. So there's, there's heavy consumption, so to speak, uh, and and we should be moving to a world in which we perhaps consume less and create more. Uh, it's very easy today to spend literally the whole day just reading you know, news and, and uh, all sorts of online articles and so on and so forth, it takes more effort to actually create something. And, and we need to be moving, uh, according to Tony Wagner at least, we need to be moving in a direction where we maybe consume a bit less and produce a bit more. Uh, number five is the notion of extrinsic, extrinsic versus uh, intrinsic motivation. Uh, and so in, extrinsic motivation might be you're motivated by a financial reward or, or uh, you know, making a lot of money and, and so on and so forth. Where intrinsic is where you are, where you feel like you are just inherently interested in that particular topic. And, and that's what you really do to, uh, and, and you're driven by that, that inner, you have that inner drive versus being driven by maybe more materialistic concerns. Okay. And, he, and finally, he, he does mention this notion, this very powerful this very powerful chain of kind of play, so where you kind of explore, you, 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 you engage your curiosity, and you kind of tinker with things, and, and then in turn, play can build passion, where you become really excited about something. Uh, and then passion, in turn, can be used to help you establish a purpose. So there's kind of this progression between play, passion, and purpose. Thanks a lot, and I will stop this video right here.